views and opinions expressed in Cold and Missing are exclusively those of the hosts. All parties mentioned are considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Cold and Missing also contains adult themes and languages and is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Cold and Missing. I'm your host, Allie McLaughlin. I am your other host, Eli Solkowski. We are husband and wife, and I do the research. Eli brings the reactions and the Sits questions. Sits on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You play no. a very important role. I'm also... I'm making a movie right now. We don't need to talk about that, but... Guy. Yeah, you're a busy guy. You have a lot of side hustles. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Hustle. Hustle, hustle. <laughs> but no, I, I do the research, bring you the story, and Eli's here listening for the first time and reacting and uh, being an active listener with you all. So yeah, <laughs> that's cold and missing. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. What episode is this? This is eight, if I'm not mistaken. Mmm, Ocho. Ocho. Wow. Sweet. Two months we've been doing this. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, yeah brother. brother. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. I'm very proud of you, honey. Thank you. I it's been my goal just to get past that like ten episode hump. A lot of podcasts will have what's called pod fade. So there's a lot of podcasts. What's that, the honeymoon phase. Yeah. So there's a lot of podcasts out there. This in is the when world. you start seeing the, the underwear on the floor. Yeah. The, yeah, the dishes in the sink. You start uh-huh. to notice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of podcasts start to fade and a lot don't make it past their 10th episode. So um, that's my goal. Make it past 10. I want to make it past, way past 10, but as of right now, those yeah, are short term wow, goals. That made my heart sink a little bit. I was like, what, is she, what the hell is she saying? I don't know this plan. She's saying it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. It's live. It's not live. It's not. <laughs> um, they know that. <laughs> Wow, giggly. We're this is our first time recording at night, so we're a little a little tired. Yeah, yeah, we've had a full day, so this is interesting. We're coming to you Sunday night. Uh, this will drop tomorrow, Monday. Sunday night. Eli and I went to Monster Trucks recently, so there's been a lot of announcer voice in the house. <laughs> And also, by the way, if you've never been to a monster truck rally, go, go, what are you waiting for? Yeah. It's so, you don't need to know a single thing about monster trucks to like get into it immediately. I knew nothing and immediately was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. They're big and they're doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I got like the racing and like the freestyle. Like bears on wheels. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the handstand thing yeah. they're doing. I got it. I kept and up. shout out to uh, to our friend Keaton, who is an announcer for um, Monster Jam, and she hooked us up with tickets. So if you're listening, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Keaton. You brave digger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Shout out to Keaton. Shout out to Monster Trucks. <laughs> <laughs> A big shout out to Trucks because <laughs> they're so big. <laughs> Do you remember what we're on this week? Missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. So we're on missing this week. It's a 50, 50, 50, yeah. 50 chance every week. Yeah. So you got that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> wow. So we are covering Joanna Gino Wright, and this takes place December 18th, 2016. I'm going to call Joanna by Gino because that is the name that she went by. And just like a quick note at the top here about pronouns. Um, She is a part of the LGBT community and is a proud stud, her words. And so I just did a lot of digging on her Facebook just to make sure I was using the correct pronouns. And I saw videos where she was referring to herself as she, her. So I will use those pronouns throughout our podcast today. Gino is 33 years old when this takes place in 2016, but 
as of today in 2022, she would be 38 years old. And this takes place in the Marquette Park neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. A little bit of background information about her. She's um, an LGBT activist and a proud stud. She worked as a hairstylist specializing in braids and locks and had lived in the Marquette neighborhood for 30 years and was well known and well liked by the community. Hell yeah. She also goes by the name Jojo and Doo-Wop. Wow, incredible nicknames. Gino, Jojo, Duop. I would take any of those. I know, great nickname. I'm like, yeah, call me Gino. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Gino? Like, what a great, it's a great name to shout. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants her friend named Gino. For sure. <laughs> At the time of her disappearance, she was a uh, five foot two, 100 pounds. She had brown hair that she wore in locks, but the ends were dyed a really bright red. Cool. Yeah. Um, brown eyes and lots of tattoos all over her body, um, but both of her sleeves, mm-hmm. or both of her arms had tattoo sleeves on them. And so a couple of her more noticeable tattoos out there, uh, for our listeners to be aware, on one of her arms she has the name Londa below two rainbow Venuses, the name Joseph, Red, orange, yellow, green, and purple stars, swirls, a rose. On her chest, she has the name Mary, and then 1936 through 2009 underneath it. And then she has a tattoo on her throat as well, and I couldn't quite make out what it is, but there's definitely like a number two that's very large and centered on her throat that's very noticeable, and then some words around it, but I couldn't quite make out the words from the photographs that I was looking at. But it's a large number two. So, let's get into it. Let's do it. So, December 18th, 2016. Gino is walking home from a friend's house on 63rd Avenue between Rockwell and Tallman. And 63rd, for those unfamiliar with Chicago or with this area in Chicago, this is a very busy street. There's um, a major bus that runs along it, the 63rd. The, the 63 bus um, runs along it, and there's actually a bus stop within this block that we're talking about. And there's also a very large senior assisted living center that runs along several blocks, but also includes this block that we're talking about. Okay. So, very busy intersection, lots of traffic. At around 1.45 p.m., a blue 2015-2016 Mazda pulls up next to Gino as she's walking home. The blue Mazda has Ohio plates on it. Okay. So three men jump out and attempt to throw Gino into the car. Gino is yelling for help and trying to fight three men off while this is happening. I know, my heart is like racing. Yeah, I'm like, this is like... Well... I'm speaking from, like, before uh, <clears throat> my medical transition, you know. Well, I guess it's still now, but I think it's most women's worst fear. Yeah. And, yeah, I guess it's still mine, too. So, it's, like, it's really... Whew, I know. It like hit me, like, oh, my body, like, immediately responded. Yeah. <laughs> I, every time I read it, like, my heart races. So, three men are attempting to pull her into this car, but she's fighting them off. And then possibly a fourth man or one of the men, it's unclear if it's three or four men, but um, possibly a fourth man hits her in the head and throws her in the car. No. Yeah. So they get her into the car. And witnesses see Gino being abducted because... It's 1.45 in the afternoon. It is during the middle of the day. No one did anything? Well, immediately 911 is called. So police are there quickly, but nobody intercepted as she's fighting. Why? I I don't know. I don't know if maybe people saw, like, you know, at the old folks' home, so they were, like, inside, like, up several flights of stairs, so, like... The quickest thing they could do was call 911. Like, they couldn't... I don't yeah. know if there was nobody out and I guess on the if streets. it's, like, a busy... Inter- I don't know, but you would think cars would pull over. 
You would think that. Um, yeah, and it, again, it's December, so not a lot of people are outside. It's colder. Yeah, but... But witnesses see it. Oh, oh and God. And she, she is, like, screaming for help when this happens. No. So, I know, I know. Investigators will attempt to track Gino by using her cell phone, but the last location for the phone is where she's abducted from. And they probably immediately turned it off. That's what I'm assuming. Um, it, it's unclear. I could never find. Um, again, like other cases that we've gone over before, there's not a lot of information out there about this. Sometimes there's missing pieces to our puzzle because... Because they are, there are cases that are on. They are cold and missing. Like we don't pieces are it. going to be miss, Pieces are going to be missing. Exactly. Yeah, so, and I mean, our hope is that somebody out there knows something. Yeah. Hopefully, as, one of you has a, a missing piece, or knows someone who knows someone who has a missing piece. You know, that's like why we're doing this. Yeah. It's unclear if her cell phone is retrieved from that location. If maybe it's dropped, and that's why it's pinged, or if it's immediately shut off, uh, unclear, but the last location it pings is the place she is abducted from. This happens December 18th. Christmas and New Year's will come and go, and there's not a lot of reports about it or what's happening, but in January, January 11th, actually, the family will gather to pass out flyers and to get the word out about her being missing and her abduction and police at this point are not calling it a kidnapping and as of 2022 in their description of her case and like her last known whereabouts they'll say that she was possibly abducted to me it's an abduction if somebody is yelling help and being forced into a vehicle where i'm sitting that's an abduction yeah i'm gonna go ahead and say yeah to that as of January 2017, um, so this would just be a few weeks after Gino went missing, but we're in a new year now. Police are gathering security video in the area because, again, it's 2017. There is a lot of good security footage out there. And this is, a, again, a busy road. Um, for our listeners out there that follow us on Instagram, I'm going to include some Google Earth images that... I mean, it'll show you, even if you're completely unfamiliar with Chicago, that this is a busy road. And it would be wild to think about somebody being abducted in broad daylight in the middle of the afternoon and it still go this far with nothing. Yeah. And as of January 2017, the alderman for the ward um, will offer a $500 reward for information. And then there's... Not a lot of updates. Um, the next update that I could f really find um, happens November 15th of 2017. <gasps> Your birthday. Bad stuff always happens on my birthday. <laughs> I know. October, November, December always has, like, wild stuff happening. I know. I remember, like, I think from, like, some, like, some of the, like, classic serial killers who don't need any more attention. Like, mm -hmm. they tend tended to kill a lot around my birthday. Yeah. Like, hey, hey. didn't you know I was going to be born 40 years later? How could you? <laughs> the drama. <laughs> so, yeah, almost a year later, on November 15, 2017, police confirm that they have located the car that they believe was used in the abduction of Gino. But there was no trace of Gino anywhere in the car. And I saw one report that the vehicle with the Ohio license plates, this 2015-2016 Mazda, that it could possibly have been a rental car. So it would be like professionally cleaned in between uses and stuff? Right. Yeah. And, and if not, there would be like hundreds of like fingerprints and stuff. Yeah. There should be a pretty clear record of who had the car on that date, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. And that's, yeah. Oh. No report of who rented the car, if it was a rental car, even if it was a rental car, but. Um, yeah, and it could have been a rental that was stolen. Yeah. There, so. There's a lot of possibilities about this car, but police confirmed that they seem to have located it, but there was no trace of Gino with the car. 
And so at the one year mark, December 16th, 2017, um, or around the one year mark, I should say, family hold a vigil for Gino. At the vigil, the family of Marlo, I think it's pronounced Gully. I'm going to look more into this. Um, His family is also there. And Marlo is a friend of Gino. And Marlo goes missing within blocks of where Gino was last seen on October 9th, 2017. So less than a year later. And like I said, Marlo and Gino were friends and knew each other. Yeah. So his family is there to support and um, to be with Gino's family. But then they are also joined by the family of Shanti uh, Bohannon. And she went missing within blocks um, July 23rd, 2016. So that's five months before Gino. And yeah, disappeared within blocks of Gino and Marlo. And her body is later found in a trash can um, in an abandoned building. You've got to be fucking kidding me. And the case is still unsolved. So... Gino, Marlo, and Shanti all knew each other, according to community members. So they all seem to have known each other, but Marlo and Gino knew each other the best. Um, Like, they are in, like, Facebook photos together, um, that kind of thing. Wow. No shit. Yes. So community believe... trash can. I know. Well, there's also, and I think I'm going to cover, like, this stuff and um, Marlo as well because they are both unresolved. So I think I'm going to cover them kind of right after this as, like, part of a little series because they all do seem to be connected. It's also the, um, the Chicago Strangler theory. And, you know, two of those bodies were found in trash cans, so... I, yeah, I want to, like, look into it all a little bit more. Yeah, I think that, I definitely think that we should, and I have a feeling that some of our listeners will want to, like, maybe go on that, like, a navigational journey with us. Yeah. Yeah, so community members believe that all of these deaths are connected, but police have never confirmed or denied this. And then, to quote a community member, uh, Don Valenti, quote, we know that something is happening over here, that people just dis- keep disappearing over here, end quote. Sierra Mobley, uh, who was Gino's girlfriend at the time, is also quoted as saying, God is the only one to have the last say. No matter what they could be doing to her, if he's not ready for her to come home, he won't send for her. End quote. But that's it. What? That's it. That's all that I could find on Gino. And I know we discussed this before uh, when we talked about Travel Henley, uh-huh. um, who is missing in Columbus, Ohio. You know, uh, Gino is a young, black, gay woman, you know? Yeah. And there was no real big media coverage when she was abducted. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like embarrassed that I don't know about this, you know? Yeah. Almost like I have that feeling like... Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Chicago, you know. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're I'm like, part this of, is my city. Yeah. You know, like, how do I not... It's yeah. our city, and, you know, we're part of the queer community. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, how could this happen to somebody in our community, you know, and us not know about it? Yeah, I, I mean, it's like the whole, like, if she had been a young white woman who was being grabbed off of the sidewalk in the middle of the day... It just, like, I don't think would have happened the same way. No. Well, I mean, we almost have, like, a direct comparison. There were those recent attempted kidnappings Mm -hmm. in the uh, West Loop, West Town area of Chicago. Yeah. Um, You know, but... But they were attempts. They were attempts because um, the women, I believe, uh, were white that were being attempted to be abducted. But people intervened every time. Yeah. It's like... See, that's what I'm saying. I guess... uh, It's sad that, like, somebody was asking for help and nobody came. 
screaming for help and nobody came, even though there were people there. Yeah, I mean, that happened to me on the train when they grabbed my shit. Mm -hmm. I was on a train filled with people and nobody came over. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the folks... A lot of the time, folks don't intervene when they should. Yeah. It's it's that theory of, like, every, every day you are going to, like, pay a price for, like, being quiet or for being brave, you mm-hmm. know? Like, you... There's always, like, a cost, and it's like, what, what am I going to pay for today? Mm-hmm. And most people, like, I will pay to be quiet, to just, like, not engage... You yeah, know. to not be involved. In yeah, this, you know. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to pull the focus over to me. It just like I know it's not this, the exact same, but that experience of like yelling for help and seeing other people and like and like thinking like why is it right. not hap- why is the help not happening mm-hmm. <laughs> and like having that thought while you are in that the moment of the danger mm-hmm. where like you're that's where like the worst nightmare is coming through is like not only is this happening it's almost like in a dream you know when you're like trying to stop what's happening and it won't mm-hmm. but like you know that you can mm-hmm. that's like what was going through my mind also in the situation while I was being attacked which is like a whole other level of trauma mm-hmm. you know so what are our, our uh, sources? What what uh, is there anything that any ways we can be helpful, or some of our listeners, or um, sources and stuff? Yeah. So the sources for today's story: the Charlie Project, ABC Seven News, Disappeared Blog, Our Black Girls, CBS Chicago, NBC Five Chicago. Uh, Gino's own Facebook and Gino's family's Facebook and then WGN 9 Chicago. So if our listeners know anything about the disappearance, the abduction of Joanna Gino Wright, um, they are encouraged to call the Chicago Police Department at 312-747-8380. Thank you all so much for listening. Yeah, I we cannot say enough how much joy it is bringing us to like watch the following numbers grow and not just because that's awesome, but like because that means more eyes on these cases that really deserve the attention. Absolutely. Yeah. Um more eyes and ears. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um being able to bring light to cases that aren't as well known and especially that are unsolved. Like I know this has been talked about a lot recently, especially with the Dahmer documentaries dropping on Netflix or Mm -hmm. the Ryan Murphy, like documentary type thing. It's not like a true documentary, but biopic, whatever, um, you know, about the ethics of true crime as a genre and what that means. Like, the content that you're consuming, right? Like, Mm -hmm. it's somebody's worst day. It's a family's worst day. And, you know, that sucks. It sucks that um, sometimes families are forced to relive that trauma over and over without consenting to it. Yeah, and I think, you know, from our perspective, since we haven't experienced something, you know, exactly like that, like, that sucks is, like, putting it as lightly (laughs) as possible, you know? Yeah, like... (laughs) Yeah, I just, like, we, we talked about it. Like, I couldn't imagine, like, you know, putting on something like Dahmer and being like, that's my sibling being murdered right now. Like, yeah. Like, that's, like, that. <sighs> yeah. So, you know, here at Cold and Missing, we just do cold cases that um, still need answers and unresolved missing person cases. And part of when I'm researching these cases, I always look to see, like, is the family still really active um, in this search? And, like, are they still wanting answers? Because, If there are recent reports of them asking for media attention, then for sure, like, yeah, we'll for sure cover it, and we feel good about that. Ellie Um, Ellie does, well, first of all, she does very extensive research across the board, but she makes it a point to make sure that 
you know, privacy is respected. Sometimes families, they don't want it brought up again, even if it's cold or missing. So Allie makes sure that um, these are cases that people still want um, public attention on. Yeah. So I don't know if you've been thinking about like your true crime ethics recently, if all the discourse has got you thinking about it. I just want to be forthcoming with where I'm sitting and like where I'm pulling my cases from and my motivation behind it. I... I'm never wanting to shock and awe you. I'm just genuinely trying to get all the information out um, to give as complete of a timeline as possible to try to get memories jogging and tips flowing. Um, Yeah, I understand crimes in a timeline fashion, so that's how they are always presented. I hope you like it, too. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah, and with that... um, Thank you so much. Uh, we will post pictures of Gino and the road where the abduction took place on our Instagram, which is at cold and missing. I also started a TikTok. It was very complicated for me. Um, but <laughs> I was very embarrassed to do it. I was glad I had the house oh to myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like having, it was like being in a nursing home. <laughs> I was like, well, how do you get the thing? To I was Allie's you? orderly for the TikTok. Um, <laughs> the TikTok Truly. Teaching. <laughs> so uh, you can find us on there too um and i'm sure we'll only get better and better as i learn what all the buttons are it doesn't you don't when you're as hilarious as you are you really don't have to do much honestly oh but not that's for your personal our tick the cold and missing tiktok is not hilarious but Allie's personal tiktok is please differentiate the two because we just talked about how we are respectful (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm like it's hilarious (laughs) Um, on our Instagram page, you can buy us a coffee. Thank you so much. Someone bought us five coffees last week. <gasps> yes. Wow. They, um, did it anonymous, anonymously. So, um. Aw, cute. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate it. Wow. It was, that makes you <laughs> I know. It was wow. so cool. It was so cool. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and if you would like to leave a little tip for us, buy us a coffee. That link is in our Instagram bio. And of course, please like subscribe. We got some new, um, reviews this week, just some five stars. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who's left a review. We appreciate it so much. Um, yeah, like our faces after we like see that, you know, more people are but like listening and are, are getting involved, our faces at the end of those conversations hurt because like we're Allie and I are just smiling at each other. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just feels like we're on the precipice of um, like something really great, and yeah. I'm so proud of the little oh, community sweetheart. we're building. It's really great. Thanks. It is really great. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm just so proud of the community that's being built and yeah. the true crime community, the true crime podcast community has been so great and so welcoming so yeah um what up weirdos (laughs) (laughs) sleuths yeah (laughs) um yeah but that's all we got so have a great week y'all thank you so much thanks for listening bye